Here we're looking at example 9 from our 3.17 notes. We're asked to find the following derivative. And right away we notice that we're trying to take the derivative of a natural log of a function. And here is our function with various operations kind of going on. Uh, just in following those two steps, we know that the first one is, is going ahead and trying to break up this function as much as possible with different natural logs. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. And we have the derivative with respect to x. Haven't taken the derivative yet, just saying that we will eventually. Uh, let's go ahead and just show the quotient first. So we have then the natural log of the cosine of x. Now instead of that being divided by, we're going to change that to a subtraction sign of the natural log of the cube root of x times x to the fourth plus x. So again, there we just broke up our two natural logs based on that quotient property. Next, let's go ahead and uh, maybe show that these are actually, you know, this is the product between these items. So we can go ahead and break up that one as well. So we're still have yet to take the derivative, just saying that we will. Um, the natural log of the cosine of x, so pretty much just rewriting that first piece altogether, minus, I'm going to go ahead and show that these are because you have a product here, you know, dividing that up into two natural logs, we would have the natural log of the cube root of x plus the natural log of that x to the fourth plus x. Now, the key reason, though, why um, we threw this parenthesis around there is so that that negative is going to be applied to both of them and not just this natural log of the cube root of x. So it's pretty important to notice that it's going to actually both of them. And in fact, that's actually why I showed this step with the product and now going ahead and applying that negative. So then we have the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the cosine of x minus the natural log of the cube root of x minus the natural log of x to the fourth plus x. And now we have to go ahead and see if we can um, expand this even further. It looks like we actually can with this particular guy right here. Uh, we notice that we have the cube root of x. We can actually rewrite that. Um, most of the other ones we're actually okay with, but we have to expand that, that middle one even further. So we have yet to take the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the cosine of x minus the natural log. Instead of the cube root of x, we can go ahead and change that to x raised to the one-third power minus the natural log of x to the fourth plus x. Using that property with, uh, using that power property with logarithms, we can go ahead and take that one-third power and throw him in front. So then we're trying to yet take the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the cosine of x minus one-third times the natural log of x minus the natural log of x to the fourth plus x. Now it's pretty tempting to want to use this, this exponent x to the fourth and throw that in front of the natural log, but notice it's only being applied to this, this first x. It's not over here as well, and so unfortunately we can't even just do that. So this is seen as one big set together. So unfortunately, that power property does not hold here. Now that we've expanded this as much as possible, we can go ahead now and apply our derivatives to each of the terms. So when we do that, looks like we're trying to take the derivative of the natural log of the cosine of x. Uh, this is another you know, derivative of a natural log. Looks like we have natural logs all across the board. And so anytime you're trying to take the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of a function, just kind of like so you guys can re-see it, that's going to be your derivative on top divided by your original function. So in other words, when we're trying to take the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of cosine of x, well, that's going to come out to be our derivative on top. So the derivative of cosine of x comes out to be negative sine of x 
And then we rewrite our function on the bottom. So that would be the cosine of x. Because again, this was considered to be our f of x. This is considered to be your f of x. And this is also considered to be your f of x. Then we have minus one third times the derivative of x, or if you really wanted to, you could do, you know, you could actually, it still holds true with this definition. Um, the derivative of x on top would come out to be just one divided by your original function on the bottom, that's just x. So it still holds true, or you could use that shortcut, derivative of the natural log of x is the same thing as one over x. So minus the derivative again, on top of this guy, so that would be, uh, looks like 4x cubed plus 1 all over the original function on the bottom, so x to the fourth, plus x. And so just kind of cleaning this up a little bit, looks like our derivative comes out to be negative tangent of x. Uh, minus 1 over 3x and then minus 4x cubed plus 1 all over uh, x to the fourth plus x. So maybe just throw a parenthesis on there. Just to show that if you were to keep going that would be distributed to both. Again, though, that is example 9 from our 3.1 set of notes.